Um, I came across this PDF on the internet. I just thought it was interesting. It was written by a pediatrician called Dr. Mary Kathleen Fay. And in quote, she had a problem with her child and that her, her child was finding it difficult to settle at night. And she was using the textbook example would be to leave the child to cry it out in the belief that, yes, you leave the child to cry it out and after a couple of nights, the child starts settling in. But it wasn't happening. So she started wondering, well, maybe what we were taught as pediatricians just isn't working. It's not working with my child. And then in quotes, a miracle happened. His main problem was his little runny nose. So she brought him to a specialist who cleared the runny nose, resulting in a remarkable change in how he acted. Her child was less hyperactive, calmer, with better concentration. So it's interesting on foot of what we were looking at earlier on, the relationship with ADHD. Children who might be typically do not sleep well, causing them to be tired during the day and possibly unable. So we looked at this in the effect of behavioral problems and ADHD and ADD. Mild breathing can cause poor oxygen concentration in the bloodstream. It's not altogether true, but it just means that the mild breathing is causing impaired delivery of oxygen. Dr. John Mew, he, his father was a dentist. He trained as a dentist, then he trained as an orthodontist, and then he trained as an orthodontic surgeon. So the most extreme cases of facial abnormalities, he would have to break their jaws and reset them. And he started noticing that it was the children who were coming in with the worst cases, they were mouth breeders. And he was getting upset of having to, to do surgery on these kids. So he started looking at other ways. Can we shape the jaws by getting them out closed and by, by using different devices? So to give you an example, airway size, his work is BioBlock. Um, that's what the name of the treatment they use. And the next example that we look at is a 10-year-old. And she had suffered from obstructive sleep apnea. And you'll see why she suffered from obstructive sleep apnea when you see her airway size earlier in her life. And she had a tonsillectomy and adenoids removal at age six. She had one and a half years of orthodontics prior to seeing me and had all four primary cuspid teeth removed. And the front teeth retracted in both arches, so everything was pulled back. So that was her airway size on the left-hand side. You see the black. So it's no coincidence that she had obstructive sleep apnea. Now she had adenoids removed, she had tonsillectomy, she had four teeth removed. And if you remove teeth, what way are the jaws going to go? They're going to go back, make the airway size smaller. So Bill Hang is an orthodontist in the United States. He guided her face forward. He guided everything forward, bring everything forward. Now she's 10 years of age, so she's still quite young, but you see the change of the airways. So he has saved her probably from a lifetime of obstructive sleep apnea, just because he was able to bring her airways, open her airways and bring her face forward. Now if this child had been nasal breathing, this child probably wouldn't have needed this intervention because their airway size would have been normal as opposed to craniofacial abnormalities. A good looking face is determined by a strong sturdy chin, developed jaws, high cheekbones, good lips, correct nose size and straight teeth. When a face develops correctly it follows that the teeth will be straight. Straight teeth do not create a good looking face but a good looking face will create straight teeth. <coughs> This boy here is a 10 year old. You see everything, he's got a wide facial structure. Everything is proportioned, reasonable proportion. He's reasonably good, good looking face. At the age of 14, he gets a gerbil as a birthday present. He takes an allergic reaction to it, his nose blocks, and that's how his shape of his face changed. This is the typical mouth breathing face. His nose blocked, so his mouth started to open. You see that his face is sank downwards. You see the white under the eyes because the face is sinking down. You see the thickness of the lower lip here because it's not getting used, so it's flaccid. His nose looks big because as the face moved downwards, his lower jaws went in. It's not necessarily that his nose is big, but it's his jaws are too far back. You see this double chin here. He's only 17. 
He's a double chin because his jaws aren't forward enough, so this is going to come in on his airways. He looks tired. He is poor definition of cheekbones, and as a result of his mouth breathing, in three years his face changed like that. When you know it, you will start seeing these faces very, very often. And it's not just from an aesthetic point of view, but children have a face like that, have poor health. My face is a little bit, in some degrees, I can see different characteristics. I brought my own jaws forward by being conscious of them. I've had my top jaw widened by a centimeter and a half with different appliances. My nose is crooked, but if my jaws were forward, my nose would have been straight. My, my face is longer. I have a very high palate which goes up into the sinuses. And that was from having my mouth open for 25 years. So it can be avoided. Children have very good looking faces. But by the time they're teenagers, it all changes, and you have to ask, how is the face growing? Yeah? This boy here, Mew was in having a, a dinner at a restaurant, and he's seen a parent with a child, child, and the child, I think, is five years of age here, and he noticed that the child had its mouth open. So he went over to the mother, and he tapped her on the back. And he said, if I could encourage you to do something, would be to encourage your child to breathe through his nose. So Mew taught no, no more of it. And then 12 years later, the mom came to a surgery and said, do you remember you encouraged me to encourage my own boy to breathe through his nose? And of course, the mother didn't encourage the boy to breathe through the nose. But the mother said his teeth are perfectly straight. And Mew said, I'd love to have a look at that. So she brought him in, and Mew took photographs of the boy. And yes, 12 years later, the teeth are relatively straight. But look at the face. That, Mew says, could have been prevented. But the mother thought that he was going to grow up with that face. And it's exactly the same things that we were looking at earlier on. You see the narrow facial structure. You look at the lip the fat lip. You see that the nose is crooked and more importantly, where are the jaws there? Set back. If the jaws are set back, what influence is that having on the airways? It's going to make the airways smaller. If your airways are smaller, you're going to be more susceptible to obstructive sleep apnea. If you're susceptible to obstructive sleep apnea, it's estimated it reduces your lifespan by 20 years. So not just the quality of your life, but your life. So this is the typical facial pattern associated with mouth breathing. Tired eyes, poor definition of cheekbones. It's everything that's opposite to good looks. Good looks, alert eyes, high cheekbones, wide facial structure, a full mouth. A nasal breather or a mouth breather, a mouth breather with a narrow top jaw, when you ask them to go like this, you'll see black triangles either. Now you won't see it online because mine have been widened. But if you ask somebody to go like this, and if you see black triangles either side, you know that their jaws are too small for their mouth. Do you understand? And then it leads to overcrowding of teeth. The issue is not that the teeth are too big. The problem is that the jaws are too small. And why do you think the jaws are too small? Where should your tongue be? In the roof. And if your mouth is open, where is your tongue? And as a result, you have pressures exerted by your lips this way and your cheeks this way, but you have no counteracting force of your tongue exerting it this way. Do you understand? And that's why mouth breeders have narrow facial structures. Muse patients, two sisters, the girl on the left, Kelly, she was a nasal breeder. The girl on the right, Samantha, wasn't. You see her mouth is open there. So again, you see an exaggerated tendency. We know that she is a typical mouth breeder, we're looking for tension here. There's a mentalis muscle, and you can see the tension here. But you can see the shape of the face as well. You can see the white under, OK, you can see it there. So that's maybe not a good example. Who do you think is the more attractive of the two girls? The girl on the left.